Um, I'll start with the ones that were submitted in advance uh, while some more come in. It looks like a lot have already come in here, but let me get the ones that were submitted in advance. Number one is how much in detail should you withhold from your partner so you can get a genuine reaction on the air? Well, we talked about that a little bit. We're going to talk about that more in the next one next month. Um, yeah, I don't think that show prep should be uh, prepped to the point where it is uh, scripted or you've rehearsed because that natural spontaneous response is fantastic. And there's nothing like a, a an organic laugh. Um, but at the same time, the other members of your show have to know what you're talking about. They have to know what this break's all about. Uh, we talk about that some in the seminar, Harvest Your Life, that you can get at tjohnsonmediagroup.com. But the, the, the key here is that everybody on the show knows what the break is about and the, what I call the essence of the break, the emotional part of the break. Uh, what's the main point? What's the direction? Where are we going with this? But they may not know exactly how we're going to get there. Um, so for, for example, let's say you're doing a break, um, about, uh, oh, I, I can't think of anything, um, off the top of my head. Um, but if you're, if you're doing a break about uh, watching a TV show and it's uh, about getting in a fight over who controls the remote, uh, with your spouse and you start into a break and all the partners know is that we're doing a break about watching TV. So you start the break and you start talking about the details of watching TV and what show you were watching. And they think that's what you're talking about. So it takes you down the wrong path and you get bogged down in details. They know that this is a relationship story about, uh, about how, how couples get in fights over small things, including the TV remote. But then it's the storyteller's job to tell that story in a way that's going to engage those around them. And that gets into being good improv, improv, uh, improv uh, artists. Uh, improvisation. Uh, improv is, uh, I always have a hard time with that word. Improvisational performers. Uh, uh, if you can improv well, it um, uh, is, is, is going to, to work really well. And that's why I recommend improv courses. Next question is, uh, if you're an afternoon or an evening host, there's a good chance that the best show prep topics have already been touched on during previous day parts. Yeah, maybe. But again, show prep isn't what you talk about. Show prep is how you talk about it. So if you turn on the TV, turn on TV to ESPN or uh, any of the news networks today. And what are they talking about? The same thing over and over and over and over but they talk about it in different ways because there's different personalities doing it and they're doing it with different guests and with a different angle and a different perspective. So you may not have completely original ideas to talk about. You may be talking about the same thing that the morning show did or the midday personality did. That's okay. Cause you're going to talk about it in a much different way. You're going to talk about it in a way that's uniquely yours. And that's that art of going from being that hunter gatherer of what you talk about into the storyteller and performer of how you talk about it. And it comes alive through your own unique personality. And the other thing I'd say about that is don't worry if somebody happens to have heard the morning show and also hears you talking about the same thing. Chances are it's not gonna happen. They don't listen that much and they also don't pay that much attention. So radio is not that important to most listeners. They may have heard it this morning and it goes in one ear and out the other. And it's not just your station or your show that they might have heard something. They may have read about it online. They may have seen a YouTube video about it. They may have seen it on social media. They may have heard it from a friend. They may have heard it on another radio station. They may have seen it on Good Morning America Today or the Today Show. They could have seen the same topics and the same content in a number of places. None of that matters if it's about your performance and not about the topic. So don't worry about it. Plan your show and, 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 and work on that original entertainment. The original part of it comes through the performance, not through the content itself. Next question is, where are some unique places to find show prep that might not be available anywhere else? Um, Personality magnet is one. Uh, again, take out a take out a, a sample on that. We try to keep all the topics in there unique, uh, and we provide multiple angles that are uh, appropriate for different types of shows. 
But again, don't get too hung up on what you talk about or being the only one who has found this piece of content. Uh, you're the only one who's going to perform this piece of content the way that you perform it. That's the key. So don't worry about being uh, completely unique, uh, completely original. Worry about being completely unique, and and and, and that'll get you through. So so uh, again, there's there's a ton of places to get show prep. Next question is similar to that. It was uh, with all the information sources out there. How do you parse it down quickly and effectively? Uh, there's several. Number one is uh, RSS feeds are great. Um, you can uh, have RSS feeds almost create a, a custom uh, page for you. There's also a service called Scoopit, scoopit.com, that uh, allows you to scrape, um, automatically scrape stories from a number of uh, websites and put them in your personal Scoopit page. Uh, I use that uh, on a regular basis. I use that to gather ideas for personality magnet, as a matter of fact. Um, bookmarks, uh, you find a good site, a bookmark it, and then just scan through the bookmarks on a regular basis. Um, but again, like I mentioned before, you really don't need those services if you're paying attention to life, uh, if you're paying attention to what's going on around you. Your best source of show prep content, and this goes for both of those last two questions about unique places to find show prep content and how to, uh, how to manage it uh, quickly and effectively. The best sources for entertainment come from your life and from your personal experiences that you turn into personal stories. Um, this is one about uh, how you can create content that will help listeners without it sounding like you're giving them a history lesson. Uh, same answer. Uh, the art of show prep, the science of show prep is gathering content. The art of show prep is putting it into entertainment on the air. And that's what we're going to talk about next month, uh, how to go from a hunter gatherer into a storyteller. Uh, I call it the missing link of show prep. Um, next question is how to maintain local focus without playing favorites or being boring and how not to be boring in general. Well, don't be boring in general by focusing on entertainment. Uh, you're an entertainer. You're entertaining. And that comes through uh, turning content into entertainment, uh, turning topics into stories. And again, we'll get into that a little bit more next month. Uh, how to navigate the pandemic, rioting, and whatever is coming next. How do I avoid tune out but keep my audience informed? How do I connect to my audience and deliver all this when you're tracking the same songs for multiple stations in multiple formats? Um, Voice tracking has come up. Uh, there, there's a couple of other questions about voice tracking. In fact, the next one is if there can be a distinction made in how you prep for solo shows, partnered shows, and voice track shows. So let me address voice tracking really quickly. And I don't want to go down the voice tracking rabbit hole here. All voice tracking is, is recorded live shows. It's just like what Jimmy Kimmel does. Jimmy Kimmel doesn't do a live show every night. He does it late in the afternoon, it's recorded and then aired, uh, re then played back later. That's what voice tracking is, folks. You're doing a live show that just happens to be recorded in advance. And maybe that live show that you're doing is for a station in another market or another country. It could be from anywhere else. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. I think that we put this label of voice tracking onto different types of performance and we think of it as being different than a live performance. And it shouldn't be. It just happens to be recorded as if it were live. So think about that voice tracking differently. Think about it as you're doing a full show, not a shift. You're doing a show that just happens to be recorded. In fact, I'm working with a uh, morning show right now. There's four people on the show and they record about 90% of their, sh their show is recorded. And they're only playing three or four songs an hour but 90% of it is recorded. It's recorded shortly before it airs. And there's a number of reasons that they do that. So some of it's recorded the day or two before it airs, but the things that are timely, they're still doing that just before it airs because it's more effective and more efficient. And they've learned some efficiencies of using the power of voice tracking to make their show better. So don't look at voice tracking as being different than what you do ordinarily. Um, now, to get back into navigating the pandemic and rioting and whatever's next, your question comes up and say, how do I avoid tune out yet keep my audience informed? 
I got to be careful in how I phrase this because some of you may be on a news station or a talk station or a sports station where distributing information is really important and informing the audience is what you do. But for most of you who are on this, you're in the entertainment business. You're entertaining the audience and you are using things that are happening in their world to entertain them. Don't worry about informing them. If they care about it, they already know. And if you're not the place that they go for information, they have another place that they go for information. So focus your attention and focus your prep on how to turn that information into entertainment through storytelling. Um, for those of you who are on uh, Personality Magnet, for the last uh, three months, we've had a special section in there about coronavirus and COVID-19 and things that you can do on the air. And very little of the prep content that we've created for that has to do with informing the public about how many people are sick or how often to wash your hands. A little bit of that, but mostly we're referencing those things to create original content. It's curation. That's part of what topic curation is about. Now, if you are in the business of informing your audience and that's what they come to you for, and you're asking me the question of how do I keep my audience informed, especially if I'm voice tracking into multiple markets and you have to do that far in advance, then you can't inform your audience. You can't be an effective information source if you're recording it many hours in advance. So, so you, you, you've got to be one or the other. You can't inform and not be uh, completely up to date. And you can't use, you can't just give information and expect to be entertaining. Uh, I, I, and, and I'm on the side of we're in the entertainment business and we're using the information, we're using relevant content to be entertaining. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, uh, next question is from Brad. And Brad says, many announcers are pulled in multiple directions with other tasks demanding their time as soon as the show is over and they're lucky to have an hour to dedicate to show prep. How can I maximize the effectiveness if I don't have the luxury of two hours to spend each day? Great question, Brad. Um, and look, I, I empathize with you. I sympathize with that. Um, I find that everybody who's in radio today is wearing a lot of different hats and you're pull, you are pulled in a lot of different directions. Um, I think that we need to figure out what's important to your success and invest your time accordingly. And if you're being pulled in different directions, like writing a blog for the website or uh, doing imaging that has to be done that day or doing a music log or going on a sales call, um, set aside the time for prep and work those other tasks around it because prep is central to your success. It's central to your success as a personality, as a show, as a radio station and your career. And I think it's important that you do those things. If you're a program director that's on this, uh, I feel the same way about those tasks that you have to get done every day. Maybe you're overseeing three or four or five different stations and you're making the weekend schedule and you're voice tracking two shows on three, uh, three different stations. And you've got, um, you got conference calls and you've got group contests. You've got a million things that are going on that are urgent for that day. But what's important for that day is what comes out of the speakers and what your station sounds like and having that time to coach your personalities and spend with your staff. And I think that you've got to figure out how to prioritize that and lock those things in place. And maybe you've only got an hour. Maybe you don't have two. So maybe some of this, uh, the, the things that are nice to have in the system have to be trimmed. I hope not, because I do think it's important. And I think that if you focus your time and attention on those things that are important, you're going to be more successful. And the more success, and by the way, the more successful you get, the more demands on, the, on your time you're going to have. Um, but I think a lot of times we chase the things that are urgent at the expense of the things that are important. And this is one of those things that I think is important. Now, if you're planning to, uh, if you're, let's say you work a morning show and you're on from six to 10 and you plan to be out of the room, out of the building every day at noon, maybe you're not spending enough time in your career. That's six hours. And you're working probably five or six days a week, probably five days a week you know what? Invest the time. You're investing it in yourself. So look, I, 
I know it's a grind. That's why I put in there, it is a grind and it's hard to do. And you get up in the middle of the night and there's a lot going on, but don't let show prep cause you to have a weaker show than you could have or, or lack of show prep cause you to have, cause you to have that. Follow-up question for announcers that may not have live shows, but instead do weekly voice track shows as opposed to being on the air each day. How can this plan be amended for those folks? I'd do it the same way. Uh, I wouldn't, obviously you're not planning five shows a week. You're planning one show a week, um, but I would do a creative session. I would lay out the locked in features on that show. I would work as far ahead as, as, as possible. I would voice track the things as early as possible that are not time sensitive. And then I would update the plan. Let's say you do a Saturday show that you're voice tracking. I would update that plan on Friday um, and go into that show uh, performing it as if it were live. Uh, Christi hey, Christina, good to, good to see you on. Christina says, does personality magnet lean toward a, cer a certain genre? No, it doesn't. Uh, most of the ideas I put in personality magnet are... Uh, broad enough to appeal to just about any show. I and mean, there's some that are a little too edgy for some stations and there's some that are a little too soft for other stations. But most of the topics that I come up with, I try to write three or four different angles of topics that you can take from it and you'll find something in there that you can adapt for your show. And again, the topics and the, the prep that I'm putting together isn't designed to be rip and read. It's designed to be a thought starter where you go, oh, I can see this working for me. Here's what I'm going to do with that. And you take those topics, you take the information from personality magnet into that creative meeting on Monday um, and you curate that. And you use that as one of your sources of, of, uh, of content to, to curate and schedule uh, for that week. Ian says, how much time would you recommend spending prepping a voice track show like a weekend shift, for example? Just answered that was a different question. Uh, same question from a different source. So, Ian, I hope I answered it uh, sufficiently for you. Susan said, how much does it cost to upgrade to insiders? Uh, Susan, there are uh, three different insiders plans. Um, they start at $19 a month and go up to $39 a month. Um, or you can buy an annual membership at a pretty substantial discount. If you buy a pro membership, uh, you also get personality magnet with it for free. And so personality magnet is included in the $39 a month package or the uh, $399 per year package. All right. So you can go to insidersradionetwork.com and get that information. Linda says, any advice on how to get that one person on your team to participate in prep? Yeah, that one person on the team who doesn't want to do it. <laughs> I get it. Uh, look, um, if that one person on your team is the leader of the team, is the main part of the team, might be a problem. Uh, they've got to be you know, dragged kicking and screaming uh, into the process. But I would I would uh, scare well, you know, one tactic I've used with some personalities is to scare them with it by showing them how many different directions uh, listeners are being pulled today and how everybody is is coming at them from all sides for their attention. The average human being who's awake for 18 hours a day, that's assuming you're only getting six hours of sleep, but if you're awake 18 hours a day, you're seeing 5,000 messages competing for attention. That's a new message every six seconds. And your, your competition is YouTube, and it's video games, and it's social media, and it's blogs, and it's Spotify, and it's television shows, and it's Netflix. It's, it's people texting you on the phone. Anything that takes a listener's attention away from what you're doing on the radio is competition for that attention. And if that doesn't scare you into being better prepared when you go on the air, nothing will. That's really, really important. And it is scary. Uh, it's scary because the average time spent listening per tune in occasion it has declined over the past, even in the past two or three years, from what was close to 10 minutes per occasion, it's now down to seven minutes per occasion, just over seven minutes uh, per occasion. So, I mean, that is um, ju that, that's just amazing. Uh, and, and that would scare me if I were a personality. It would scare me into doing more prep, not less. So maybe that helps in getting someone who just doesn't want to do it. Um, the man, 
it, it, it scares me when I work with a personality and they say, oh, you know, I, I just uh, come on the air and I live my life on the air. And uh, no, you don't. You're just coming in, crossing your fingers and hoping. And that doesn't work. All right, I'm going to go through the uh, chat room now and see if there's any other questions that I missed. Um, uh, Chris, great line. Chris Scotland says, prior proper planning prevents persistently poor performance. That's pretty cool. I might steal that. That's pretty good. Um, let's see what else is on here. Uh, is there a general rule for how much prep is done the day before and how much is done the morning of? Um I think I covered that in the session. Um, most of your prep should be done the day before. There, I mean, look at it this way. If something is breaking this morning that is so important that you have to change the show for it, then more of your prep is going to happen that morning than normal. But those events are few and far between. They don't happen that much. Most of the time, I'll make the case that most of the time on the show, if you're talking about what your audience heard yesterday, you're going to be more relevant because you're talking about something for which they already have a reference point. Again, the key is what you do with that content and how you talk about it, not what you talk about. I'll give you a great example. I was working with a, a show um, a couple of years ago in, um, uh, on the day that uh, Janet Jackson announced that she was, was pregnant. She was 50 years old and she was pregnant. And this information broke at about 7.20 in the morning and they went on their entertainment report and stumbled through some conversation about Janet Jackson being 50 years old and having a baby and finished the show. And I said, so what are you going to do with Janet Jackson being a 50 year old pregnant person? They said, oh, we missed the opportunity. That was this morning. I said, no, wait a minute. Tomorrow morning, Janet Jackson is still going to be 50 years old and she's still going to be pregnant and more listeners will have heard of it. So if you brainstorm some ideas, you can be more relevant and you have time to plan and prep something. And we came up with like half a dozen great topics. Everything from, do you realize that she's going to be 68 years old when her, daughter, when her son or daughter is graduating from high school? Who wants to be 68 years old and having a high school graduate? Um, and it got into all kinds of different topics like that. And the next day's show was far better. So you can usually take today's content, today's topics, and plan it today for tomorrow. And it's going to be just as really, in fact, it's going to be more relatable in most cases. Now, obviously with things happening today, like uh, COVID-19 and the protests and uh, George Floyd's uh, funeral is today, uh, those things are happening today. And by tomorrow morning, there's going to be a different spin on those stories. So that's why you do have to come together on the day of the show and update. What else do we need to know? Even the Eagles did that. The Eagles um, performed together for over 40 years doing concerts, playing the same songs to uh, night after night. Yet every night before they went on stage, they got together, they called it their circle of fear where they reviewed that show. Uh, and they all got on the same page of what's different, what's changed, what do we want to update on tonight's show? And I think radio shows should do the same thing. You should have most of it laid out. Uh, I really believe that by the time you come into the show, you should have 90 to 95% of your show completed and done. Now you're just tweaking and fine tuning that day. And it, I think you should lay out half an hour to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, McCall says, will this be available to watch later? Yes, it is uh, going to be available to watch later. I mentioned that a couple of times. You'll be getting an email later on this afternoon. Jen Ryan says, what is your suggestion to getting someone to participate this way? Is there someone who only throws up sheets printed off of prep sites with no angle on it? I, I think I kind of answered that just now. Um, Jen, I think you got to uh, shock them and scare them and make them not be lazy. <laughs> it is um, uh it's amazing to me how people think that, well, that break sounded good. So therefore that break is good. It's not the case. The listeners now expect it to sound good. That's the price of admission. You've got to sound good. You've got to be smooth. You've got to be prepared. You've got to sound like you know what you're talking about, but that doesn't make the show good. That doesn't make the break good. Um, 
Uh, Ashley says, does Trello save the days so I can go back and see what happened last month? Yes, uh, Ashley, it does. Uh, Trello saves everything and you can actually search it. So it makes a terrific archive of every past show. Uh, it's another reason that I love it. Uh, if you go on insidersradionetwork.com and do a search for Trello, I explain in detail why all the reasons why I like Trello so much. Uh, Bill says he joined 25 minutes late. Is it being recorded? Yes, it is being recorded. You'll be getting an email later on today. I see several of you answered that. Let's see, Laura. Hey, Laurie, up in uh, Calgary. Uh, great to have you on. She says the world is changing every three seconds. It sometimes feel hard. feels hard to plan more than a day in advance. Tips? Uh, yeah, I think I've addressed that a few times. Uh, most of your content is going to be original, uh, unique entertainment that's based on what's happening around us. It's not going to depend on being up to the minute and what's happening now. Unless, uh, yeah, Lori, uh, Lori's a part of the show uh, in Calgary with um, Mookie, um, Billy Joe and Lori, and they do news twice an hour. And uh, Billy Joe does the news and she's terrific in delivering that newscast. And that's what needs to be up to the minute. And that's what needs to be uh, topical and timely. And they do serve as an information source in their market. But that's the only part of that show that really needs to be up to the minute. Uh, you Obviously, you don't want to sound like you're completely out of touch or that you're irrelevant. But um, you, uh, you, you, I mean, you can't be talking about something that happened three days ago like it happened yesterday. But most of the time, you're going to be turning that into original, unique entertainment. A couple more questions about how you get other people on, on board, like your co-host. Um, set some rules. Now, uh, I, I, I put in the first section about uh, setting guidelines for show prep. And I think all of those guidelines are important but you may not be able to enforce all those guidelines at once. If you can't, just start with a couple of simple rules that we're going to show prep. We're gonna do the creative session on Monday. Uh, everybody needs to come and everybody needs to be prepared. Everyone needs to participate and nobody can come in and say they've got nothing going on, all right? Just set that rule and don't do the rest of the stuff. And then as you start getting momentum with one thing, start uh, adding more. Start adding more guidelines, more rules, evolve, evolve it. Um, but get everyone to commit to doing as much as you can get them to uh, commit to. Uh, Mackenzie says, uh, great webinar. Is there a sample of your prep that we can see? Uh, I think you're talking about Personality Magnet. Yes, if you go to personalitymagnet.com, you can take out a trial service. Uh, you can get two weeks for $1. And at the end of the two weeks, uh, if you don't like it, you can cancel and you're only out a dollar. If you do like it and want to continue month to month, it'll start charging you $19 a month after the two weeks. If you want to take advantage of the annual offer that I made, the $74.50 for a year, just cancel the trial and then buy the annual and use that um, prep my show uh, uh, discount code. Blaine Fowler, good to hear from you. Uh, are there any certain topics that are always a win, like money, relationships, and current events? Yeah, there's seven, Blaine, and that's a whole different webinar. And it, uh, uh, if you go into the webinar, Harvest Your Life, um, I've got the seven topics that you can't miss with. But I want you to be careful not to turn those topics you can't miss with into information from those topics. For example, one of them is money. Uh, money or finances. You can't miss with money as a topic, but that doesn't mean you give tips about how to save money or how to spend money or where you can get the best discounts. It means it's topics about spending money and about how you inject, you turn, you turn the, those topics into stories. And I go into that in great detail in the Harvest Your Life seminar. And also there's a Harvest Your Life ebook that you can download as well. Uh, Greg says, how do you define leftovers? It feels like they might uh, teeter on the edge of secondary list material. Yeah, it is uh, actually, Greg. Um, I, one of the things that you find as you as you prep more and you're, you're properly prepared going into a show is that, you, uh, that things happen during a show and you respond spontaneously. One topic might take off and instead of you had planned to do it for one break and it takes up three. That means two pieces of A material because remember, we're only scheduling A material. B material and C material doesn't, doesn't get uh, on the air. So if you're only scheduling A material 
and you have to bump a couple of things because a topic takes off and you want to stretch that to two or three breaks or you want to repeat it later on in the show. At the end of the show, you might have three or four segments that you didn't have time to get to, but they're all A material. So now you've got four pieces of A material that you can say, is this better than what I had planned for tomorrow? Because it's already prepped and you can just slot it in for the next day. So that's how I define leftovers. And then you look at it and say, okay, well, I've got four pieces of A material here and I've got all A material scheduled for tomorrow. What's the A minus stuff? And what's the A plus stuff? And you end up leaving some really good stuff on the cutting room floor. Now, here's an idea of what you can do with that. You can take those leftovers and turn it into an online video with bonus content that you didn't have time for in the show that day. It's a bonus section and it makes great video that promotes the show. Um, Namibia is on uh, saying, thank you for the webinar. Uh, I'm running and I'm running and programming four commercial stations at one time. It's quite stressful. Robin, I get it. I can't imagine trying to run uh, four of those. Uh, a lot of you giving some uh, very nice comments. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Tim says, is that a picture of your wife or did it come with the frame? Yeah, that's my wife. That's my wife, Cynthia, in the background. Um, thank you for asking. She's terrific. Uh, talk more about the process of the Monday creative meeting, the best way to lead the meeting, any other templates that you use within. Yeah, I've got some templates that I use, but I don't like them that much. Uh, John, um, there, there's brainstorming templates. And, and if you do a Google search for brainstorming templates, uh, you'll find some. But in sharing the ones that I use, I don't even like them that much. And I found that everybody kind of finds their own system. Uh, one system that some shows like is uh, taking all those ideas, putting it on a sheet of paper or on a slip, maybe a post-it note, where you write down the, the idea, the topic, the idea, um, the execution notes on it, and make some notes on it, and then throw them in a bucket and, ha and have like three buckets. I call it buckets of content. And one bucket is the use now bucket. You've got to use it in the next few days because it's time sensitive. Another one is somewhat time sensitive that you've got to use in the next week or so. So you can prioritize those first two. And the third one is evergreen content and just throw all those slips in the bucket and that bucket starts to fill up and you've got all these ideas. Some shows do it on a whiteboard in their office and they fill up that whiteboard with ideas and as new ideas come in that they get excited about, they take the old ideas down. Uh, the best one that I like is using Trello. You can start a board on Trello, uh, a list that is all about new ideas for show prep. And so as a creative idea comes in, you put that into a card and then you open the card and you type all the details into that card. And as the idea gets developed and people have different ideas of what they can do with it, they can come in any time and add to that card. And when it's time to schedule it, you just drag that card into the day's show that you want that that to be scheduled. So Trello is, is fantastic. Um, if you, if you get into using Trello. So if you, if you use Trello, by the way, there is a learning curve. It's going to take you a little bit of time to figure out the best way to use it and, 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 and to get to that. But, but I love it. Uh, Mikey says, big challenges. What on earth am I going to talk about? Huh? Um, I know this will be covered next month, but this is really hard. My life seems the same every day with nothing new to share. Mikey, I'm going to recommend two things for you. Watch my webinar, uh, three things. Watch my webinar, Harvest Your Life. Uh, it's available now at tjohnsonmediagroup.com. I'm gonna recommend four things. Uh, watch Harvest Your Life, download the ebook that goes with it, Harvest Your Life. Uh, there's, there's a small charge for both of them, by the way, but uh, very affordable and very worthwhile. Um, next thing is make sure you come to next month's webinar because we'll go into more detail on that. And the fourth thing is I'm gonna recommend a book to you called, um, uh, long story short, long story short is a terrific book and it is a, from a, a stage storyteller and it is absolutely terrific. And I think that those four things might get you on track. And then the oh, five things, uh, the fifth thing is work with other people. The hardest part of show prep that I found, the hardest part of doing anything creative is the redundancy of it because you start falling into patterns and you go, I've got nothing. Every day starts to be the same. So change your environment, change the people that you're, you're working with, 
change the people in your surroundings, bring different people into it and it'll jumpstart you. Another thing is get out and do something different uh, on a regular basis. Uh, six things, another, uh, another uh, good source for uh, finding things to talk about is um, watch Steve Martin's masterclass on stand-up comedy. It's at masterclass.com. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, I cover some things on that in um, uh, several different webinars. And I've also got an article about Steve Martin up on my website at tjohnsonmediagroup.com that you can read. And a lot of it comes from what I learned in watching that masterclass. Jen says, how long is the discount available on Personality Magnet? It's available through a week from Sunday. So I'm not sure what's today. Today's the ninth. So that would be June 21st. It's available through June 21st. Darren says, tell me about the guitar that's behind you. Not right above my wife. Uh, it's a Rolling Stones guitar. Um, back in the 90s, when the Stones were trying to make one of their comebacks, they came out with an album that was actually pretty good and radio stations wouldn't play it. And I played it a lot. Stones were uh, coming out on tour and I got a call from their manager one day who said, when the band is in town, they know what you've been doing. They know how you've been playing it. They followed your recommendations about the song and Mick would like to meet you and thank you. And I'm like, wow, right? So uh, they were in San Diego. I went to meet them at uh, Qualcomm Stadium and Mick came out and sat down with my wife and me for about uh, half an hour and we just hung out and talked. It happened to be Charlie Watts' birthday and they were having his birthday party uh, backstage uh, in the bowels of uh, Qualcomm Stadium. And uh, Mick invited us to go over to, uh, to Charlie's birthday party as well, which was fantastic. And he uh, gave me the guitar uh, autographed by the band uh, at the end of that. So uh, one of the highlights. Um, Mikey says, uh, where, uh, in times like this where almost all of the news is polarizing, how do I find topics that aren't going to get me fired? Um, I think you can talk about things that are controversial without being part of the controversy. And the easiest part of that is uh, what Mr. Rogers said is find the helpers, find the good news stories, uh, find things that people can agree on because you're not going to change people's life about any of this or change their minds or change their lives about any of this, but you can draw on it and be relevant. Um, when I work with personalities and we, we usually uh, create a, a character brand profile, that's uh, one of the first things we do with new shows. Uh, we identify what traits are important to, uh, the, um, uh, to, to building their brand. And when you have anything controversial uh, or, or really any topic, you want to channel the show prep through traits in your character profile. And if that character profile is very well defined, that's really easy to do. In fact, it's a great way to create three or four or five or six different stories from the same topic. You just pick a different aspect of your character profile to create the content through. And that acts as a filter and it changes the orientation of what you're creating. And that'll help you get more creative as well. So um, that's, a, that's a sixth thing I would recommend for finding things to talk about is build, your, build a character brand profile. Um, I've got the whole process on my website, tjohnsonmediagroup.com. Do a search for build a five-star character brand, a five-star character brand. And you'll see an ebook about it. And there's also a webinar that's all, that's all about that. And I'll probably be bringing that back and updating that and doing that this fall again, if you want to wait and um, uh, come online and, and watch that for free. Uh, Sean says, how can prep be applied with PPM for evening urban formats with less talk time? Um, Sean, I, I uh, get this question a lot. Um, how can I be creative when I don't have much time to talk? Um, I will say this. Um, your responsibility as an artist is to make great art on whatever canvas it is that you're given. And maybe the canvas that you're provided by your format is restricting you to a canvas the size of a postage stamp. Be as creative as you can on the size of that postage stamp. And the more creative you are, the, the, the smaller your, your canvas, the more creative you have to be. Uh, Ronald Reagan once said, uh, was asked to speak at a, um, for a fundraiser. And he said, well, how long do you want me to talk? And they said, well, we don't know yet. Does it really matter? And he says, well, yeah, it makes a big difference. He said, if you want me to talk for an hour, I'm ready now. 
if you want me to talk for 10 minutes, I'm going to need some time to prepare. And it's the same with content. It's the same with personalities. Um, the shorter your window for performance, the more important the time in preparation to make those moments count, to make that art count. So um, that, that's, what I, that's what I'd say about that, Sean. And uh, I think if you want to get some more about prep and about how you can adapt these concepts to uh, smaller windows of opportunity to perform, um, there's a ton of that on insidersradionetwork.com and go into um, the personality and then prep uh, 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 part of it. Um, let's see. Frank says, what was the code for personality magnet? It was prep my show, prep my show. Um, Frank, I think that's up on, is that still up on the, um, uh, site? It's not, uh, the file is up on there right now. Let me, uh, let me put that back up. So anybody who wants the, uh, personality magnet for 50% off, I'm going to uh, put that up right now and you'll see the code. It's get my, it's, uh, uh, it's get my prep, not prep my show. It's get my prep. Um, so use that code, get my prep, and you should be able to get that for 50% off. If you have any trouble with it, uh, send me an email, Tracy at tjohnsonmediagroup.com and I'll get that, uh, get that for you. Mike says, my wife hates that I'm always on and recording life so I can talk about it on the air. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, Mike, here's a tip for you. Um, most everybody has a uh, recording app on their phone and it's really easy to record now um, or a notes app. Um, just make bullet points to yourself. Don't develop at all. Just get a system. And, but, and, and here again, Trello is fantastic. Uh, with Trello, uh, with the Trello app on your phone, you can speak into it or you can cut and paste and you hit one button and it uploads it to your show prep Trello board. So it's sitting right there for you to develop later. And usually you just don't want to forget whatever idea it was that you had because you're going to come back and develop it later. So you can uh, spend less time of your personal time prepping and recording your life and just make little bullet points and come back to it later. Um, we are a small, uh, Bridget says, we are a small staff. Uh, many shows are solo. What do you offer that small staff and limited budget? Uh, small staff, limited budget by personality magnet, 75 bucks a year, 7450 a year with the discount code. I mean, how can you go wrong, right? That is a, that's a almost non-existent budget. It's the cheapest thing that's out there. Um, and honestly, I don't do it for the money. I do it because it's a way of uh, helping personalities who don't have the budgets from their radio stations anymore. Um, so that's, uh, th that, that to me is, uh, uh, is part of the important part of it. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Will the Q and A be part of the recording? Yes, it will. It'll be part of the recording that you get this afternoon. I only get the chance to do swing and broadcasting on occasion. Is it better to use my own format or stick to the format the presenter I am sitting in for uses? Stick to the format the presenter that you're filling in for uses. Uh, you're not trying to, yeah, yeah. All, by, by, by changing that format, by changing the format uh, of what the audience is used to, you're running them off the radio. Um, whenever a voice changes, no matter how good that next voice is, change is always negative. Change is always a bad thing to a listener. So just the, your presence of being on doing a swing shift is already a bit of a tune out. Now, if you create an unfamiliar environment at the same time, it becomes uh, another reason for tune out. So you really want to add your personality to a structure that is already there, but don't try to change that structure. Um, let's see. Andrew's got a link. Yeah, fark.com is a great site. Um, that is a, that, that's really cool. Uh, thanks for putting that up there. I forgot about that one. Um, ba -bum -bum. Two forms that you said at the beginning of Q&A never showed up on my screen. Instead, we saw you live. How about an email to each online with those attached? Uh, the forms didn't show up. Uh, yeah, Larry, send me an email and um, I will be glad to send you the form. Um, I thought that it showed up. It showed up on my screen. Maybe it didn't show up for everybody. So Larry, if you want to send me an email, I'll be glad to send you the form uh, by email. 
Um, tun, 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 tun. Brad says, great answers and content. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. Let's see. Um, Bruce uh, Matthew says he just subscribed to Personality Magnet but can't get in with a temporary password that was emailed. Uh, Bruce, send me an email. If you're still on, send me an email and I will look into that for you and uh, find out what's going on there. It should be fine. Um, what, uh, in fact, uh, what you might want to do is make sure you're logged out and clear your cache and then log back in. If you ever did a, a trial and then signed up for a full membership, um, it's probably trying to load your old membership uh, from the from the trial. So just uh, clear your cache and clear your history and you should be fine. Um, ba -ba, let's see, nothing wrong with presenting it as the news the day it breaks. And, uh, Mike, yeah, nothing wrong with presenting it as news the day it breaks and gossip the next day. That's perfect. That's exactly right. Um, that's it. It looks like uh, I've hit all the questions. Uh, oh, a couple more in the Q&A uh, section. Jessica says, is this the book? Long story short, storytelling guide. Uh, let me click on that link and make sure. It's by uh, Margot Lehman, I believe. Yes, that's the book. Yep, I clicked on it. That is the one. That's the one that you want. It is a really great book. Uh, there, there's a ton in there that I think will, will, will apply. Um, are personality magnet prior issues available or just current? Lisa, you get access to all the past personality magnet uh, content. It goes back for a couple of years now. Um, Andrew says, when I do a group therapy type of bit, should I do it at the same time like a benchmark or move it around the shift? Do it at the same time. Uh, I've got a webinar on my website called uh, Winning Features and How to Perform Them. And it goes into all the math and why you need to do them at the same time every day and not move them. Uh, the repetition of doing it at the same time is only a problem if the feature is not very good. Think about if you watch Jimmy Kimmel every night, if he moved the monologue to a different time, the monologue is a high point. It's what people tune in for. But if he moved it all around during the 90 minutes and you didn't know where it was coming up, you'd stop going there. So if you've got a group therapy type of bit, lock it in and do it at the same time every day. Um, and that looks like it's the end of the questions. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for coming to the webinar.